so a little bit about myself to give you a brief so my name is udit bhola and i am currently working as an ai scientist with potential plc uh, so if you would have heard the name of icsc potential so potential is the parent company or the partner company for icsc uh, i have been into analytics and data science space for quite, quite some time now it's been quite few years i have primarily worked in predictive analytics space in past and in my current position i am exploring more into deep learning gans nlps advanced nlps sort of things yeah so previously i have worked with hdfc life and musk in past so musk is a shipping company hdfc life you must be knowing insurance company so my some of my key areas of work has been customer analytics marketing analytics strategic analytics financial analytics monte carlo models simulations claims analytics esg analytics so that's a brief about me so let's start okay so for today we are going to study a bit about text processing using rnns so first of all rnns is basically recurrent neural networks it's an version of neural networks just like we have artificial neural network we have convolutional neural networks cnn ann and oh. then rnn yeah so as you can see on your screen uh, the diagram that you are seeing basically from here to here this is a standard architecture or for our neural network so we have got input layers we have got hidden layers we have got output layer so this this stays pretty much same in ann cnn and rnn the only difference that we have in terms of architecture in terms of diagram is this particular thing here you can see a feedback loop going back that's a recurrent network recurrent meaning repeatedly or recurring that's a recurrent network we'll study all this uh, in more detail okay moving for the day so for the agenda for this session would be firstly we would be focusing on why rnns what's the need if we already have ann cnn so why there was a need to develop rnn or to develop a different kind of architecture and some advanced nlp concepts which are required to understand rnn and then going forward we'll be covering few tasks that rnn can actually tackle and then we'll be going through a code walk through for an real life uh, assignment or maybe you can say a real life problem statement that can be you know utilized in lots of spaces in nlp okay so the first thing as we said advanced nlp concepts so the first thing is word embeddings so what is a word embedding so so you must have heard this term a lot but what is word embedding before we go that and study what is word embedding so why do we need embeddings so like what what is embeddings and word embeddings doing in nlp and rnn okay so going forward so so rnn is basically a part of text processing nlp so as you are aware that for today's topic it's text processing using rnn text processing means natural language processing so what is nlp nlp is basically machine learning applied to text or speech anything that can be converted to strings so like if you if i am speaking something all of this can be converted into written format in a pdf files in terms of strings and the problem with strings is that computers or computer language or machine learning language they don't understand the strings they will not understand what i'm saying they will not understand what udit is they will not understand what word embedding is they understand everything in terms of numbers as we have all heard binary 10101010 that sort of thing and for doing nlp and especially especially doing deep learning while you are using deep learning architectures for nlp 
the input should be in terms of number in form of numbers and text is not a number so let's say if i say i am a machine learning engineer there's no number in this it's all string computer will not understand if i put this thing into a machine learning algorithm so that's why we need to take into account word embeddings so just a quick uh, question or to intrigue your minds so what happens like when you know we multiply a string by a number so it's, it's basically like can we multiply hey into two we can multiply two into two we can multiply two into three we can multiply hey how are you into two that won't make sense so why do we need embeddings okay so to you know give you more a brief idea about what are embeddings and why do we need them consider this you must be shopping on amazon and flipkart or you know book my show many websites zomato and you must be giving reviews regarding the feedbacks of the purchases that you have done you don't give reviews in terms of okay 1 2 3 4 you mention okay i like the order the food was good the delivery was on time the courier boy was very nice he cooperated with me these sort of things and then while you are doing google search you don't type 1 2 3 4 5 6 or some binary code you type name of the uh, thing that you are particularly seeking and searching and the google pops up the results so how does it happens so it's like computer can match strings and can tell us that they are same or not but how do we make computers tell you so to give you an example if you go to google and just search about mars or space i'm sure as of now if you do it on today or like for next few months the google will definitely give you some relevant search result related to mangalyaan because you know it's in news it's in data it's in popping up on different websites mangalyaan mars space india but how do computers tell us that if when i type mars how do computer know okay this guy wants to know about mars maybe he is also you know wanting to know about the mangalyaan or maybe he is a explorer of space he wants to understand space so for basically in language natural language processing deep learning while specifically while doing deep learning or machine learning in nlp the words are treated as symbols so therefore it's like mars would have a number represented against it or space would have a number represented against it so it's like when you say mars the google will understand okay mars has got this particular number as you can see over here it's id 537 it's just a random number that i have made these numbers can change according to your uh, own customized version as you can see so if i type mars so so the so the google has a representation of id 537 so the google knows okay i want to give this guy results similar to this particular 537 so i will have results nearby 537 these sort of things so basically word embeddings are nothing but numerical representation of text so it's basically if i say hi how are you the machine will convert it into in terms of numerical representation and feed it to the algorithm or whatever architecture or maybe deep learning nlp i'm using okay so let's understand like how word embeddings because this is, is something uh, bef- without word embedding you cannot progress in nlp you cannot you know make your rnn work you cannot work with any deep learning architecture the first prerequisite is you have text data you want to make some machine learning model or deep learning model over it you need to pre process that data and that's the topic for today's uh, webinar is processing text processing using rnn so this is something very crucial for text processing so let's say let's take an example we have so basically count vector is a thing so vector you all understand vector vector is array of numbers see okay? there are two things one is scalar vector scalar and vector so vector is array of numbers so basically what is count vector count vector is basically when we have a document so let's say we have a document for machine learning that we want to do some machine learning over it the count vector model what will do is it will 
learn that numerical representation of text from that document and how do they do it it is done by the way number of times the word appears inside the document so let's take an example so if you can see on your screens we have d documents let's say two documents or three documents d is basically a number two documents or three documents and t is the number of different words in our vocabulary so basically let's say there are two documents and both the documents have got 100 and 100 words so we tot we have total of 200 words and the vec matrix would be given by d into t let's take a more deep example into this so let's say we have got a i have taken this as a document i have considered th this as a document instead it's a sentence because it's a part of a document so let's say we have document 1 the cat sat on the hat and we have another document the dog ate the cat and the hat so the total number of common words across both these documents common words across both these documents because we want to process these two documents would be our vocabulary so basically what is our vocabulary so if i go to a random person and ask what is your vocabulary so and and how how many words you know how many you know uh, synonyms and antonyms you know it would be equal to number of books he has read in his life number of articles number of dictionaries or maybe number of movies you have seen and you have learned new words so basically that is called vocabulary the known knowledge of all the words that you have so for these two documents we have a limited set of vocabulary which comes from this the cat sat on the hat the dog ate the cat and the hat so if you can see we have the cat sat on hat dog ate and we have got the the twice so we will mention it once cat is twice we are mentioning it once so basically we have to take a unique number of words inside the both the documents and so we have got two documents and we have got unique set of terms or length of that particular vocabulary is eight so the cat sat on hat dog ate and so so this is the unique set of words across both the documents had it been some really big documents let's say pdf files or something sort of that then also we will follow the same approach we will take two documents the d is equal to 2 will remain same t is equal to 8 would change based on the number of unique words across the both documents okay so now what happens is we count the number of times the each word occurs in each document so let's say we see the the cat sat on the hat so in document 1 the is occurring twice so what we do is for document 1 we so, so basically we create a matrix out of it of all the vocabulary as you can see this is a columns and these are the rows these are the row the matrix that we have created and we count the number of occurrences of particular word from the vocabulary that we have created let's say the so in document 1 you can see the and the it is occurring twice so we'll mention twice in document 2 the is occurring the 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 so we are mentioning it three times same way what we have done is for cat so for in the document 1 cat is occurring once and in document 2 dog cat is occurring once we have kept is one kept it as one and one same for sat on hat dog at and uh, any questions so far how this matrix has been created uh, if you have kindly please type into chat okay okay cool so this is a row matrix that we have created out of the document so let's say this is a example that i'm giving have you know have you been asked to apply this on a real life problem let's say you want to analyze two novels and you have been asked to do some nlp stuff on that so what we will do is 
yes girish uh, we are going uh, forward like i'll this is basically the word vectors that we are covering i'll tell you and all that how word embeddings are taken out of this so basically if you have been given two novels and you have been asked to cover some pre processing on that what you will do is you will take the number of unique words across two novels and create a matrix for those two novels for novel 1 novel 2 and matrix like that now what now as we started with that we need to convert the text into numerical representation so what we do is as you can see for the word cat the numerical representation for that for those documents would be 1 1 and for the word dog it would be 0 1 just like that we have been able to convert our text into numerical representation with the help of word vectors so this is how the word vectors are created as you can see the the you know there are a lot of similarities as well as you can see hat cat the machine is taking this into a similar numbers because there is a just a difference of c and hat we'll cover this why this is happening okay to okay to move forward let's take an another example like how to find word embedding so if you remember we started with what is word embedding so this is what we have covered is word vectors count vectors basically giving a text a num a vector so how that is done we have covered over here now we are coming back to what are word embeddings so let's say you have got five words electron newton energy mitochondria cell and we take two different books the example i was referring that you have got two novels maybe we can take a biology book and physics book physics book the number of occurrence of electron in that physics would physics book would always be higher compared to biology book so we so then so the electron has occurred 800 times in the physics books and 50 times in the biology book say for newton biology book newton has occurred just once and physics book it has occurred 500 times for energy 200 350 so these are the basically the occurrences of these particular words in these books now what happens next is let's as you can see we have got a numerical figure two dimensional or maybe you can say x and y you can you know consider this at as x and y x y x y x y let's you know try plotting this particular x and y onto a two dimensional space what we get is let if we decide to plot this onto a two dimensional space we have got electron so if you can see biology book count was for electron was 50 so it's 50 x and it was 800 as you can see yeah as you can see it was 800 for y axis so electron is here this is 50 comma 800 so this is a numerical representation of a word or string or a text into a numerical so how the machines understand that same goes for newton newton was somewhere close to 1 so x was 1 and y is 500 so this is newton energy 200 for x because it 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 occurred 200 times in biology book and occurred close to 350 in physics book physics books yeah so this is basically the visual representation of the word vectors into a two dimensional space as of now the visuals that you are seeing you know might be kind of confusing that how words can be pictureized or visualized in a scatter plot or a bubble plot as we are doing or a frequency plot as you are doing but the thing is for machine this is perfectly normal why because geometrically it makes sense as you can see you know geometrically there is no error 
if it's 50 and 800 we have plotted 50 800 we have plotted 1 and 500 200 to 50 so all sort of this thing now this particular visual representation would also help you understand how machines you know the thing we talked about over here cat why cat and hat have got one and one let's say if we have got a cat and hat over over here it's like this is cat this is hat it's close so if you remember your kindergarten times uh, you guys you know teachers used to give us homework five rhyming words five similar words like cat hat bat rat so that's how machines understand the words nearby lying words which are similar or maybe let's say if you can see it's a very interesting insight that you're getting let's say mitochondria we all know uh, we have all studied in biology mitochondria is the source of uh, is a powerhouse of cells you can see mitochondria energy cell all these are lying close close by so they are similar in nature and the mathematical representation also says the same as you can see in front of your eyes electron newton so so you know, these are all the discoveries electron proton newton so these are you know are in close proximity so energy if you can see this is also a graph or maybe a circle cluster that is becoming so this is also in close proximity so these type of visual representations or these type of word vectors are also used for the similarity similarity matrix so if 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 we go back and you know we use search you know we search at google with couple of words and get result related to it this could be one approach you know google plots what you have searched in your two dimensional space and words similar to that are picked up and the results are shown so that was the example for the word vectors now coming back what are word uh, word embeddings so basically word embeddings is nothing it's the whole word vectors for that particular document are word embeddings for a single electron it would be word vector for all of the vocabulary for those documents it would be word embeddings so when you are trying to run any machine learning nlp task on a text data you will use word embeddings at the first place and the first step would be to convert the word embeddings or the text data into numerical representation if you get a biology book you will convert all the terms used in that biology book into word vectors just like we have done now so that was one concept of word embeddings and here we complete what was why do we need word embeddings so i hope it's clear now that why do we need embeddings and what is a word embedding word embedding is basically the collection of word vectors for all of that vocabulary that we have from the documents that we are working on and word vector is basically belongs to a single particular word uh, any questions so far yeah we have got but is it yeah chandra uh, the thing is but in the, no so there is not any competition done on raw words because you will not have so the question from chandra is that you uh, uh, there might be a approach where we can use computation on raw words to arrive at vectors so the thing is you should have something to compare with you cannot compare any random word with any random word so hot and dog might mean something else python in programming would mean something else and let's say if you are comparing two books one book is python's hands on machine learning another book is uh, african continents uh, geographical area both the books will have reference of python but the name meaning of python in both the books would be different so you cannot compare with any random words you create the word embeddings based on the documents that you are actually working on and based on that only we create the word embeddings 
okay so there is another question from rohan how do we plot a graph when we have more than two documents so what happens is that i am coming to that that's my next slide only okay let's say you have got you know what happens is uh, you have got uh, here over here it is five dimensional words so what happens is if you have got more than two documents three documents four documents your word vector would become in the form of 00110 earlier in the cases we have seen it was 50 100 50 800 let's see let's say there is another book over here so there will be another column 600 another column 20 so the whole word vector representation would be 50 800 600 20 so these would be the word vector for that particular word if we have more than documents and this can go on go on go on there is no limitation to that it can keep on going as long as you want okay so how do word embeddings take into place so let's say as i mentioned that all of this is a word embedding we feed that into a neural network and <coughs> when we when we say neural network in while doing text pre processing or text processing using nlp the first layer would always be be embedding layer because we want to convert the text into numbers and then only we'll pass that in to our hidden layer so let's say we have got uh, you know uh, okay so let's say all of this 50 800 1 500 200 350 40 600 all of this gets feeds into the word embedding so these are the word embeddings that we have created and for favorite biology book for electron we get a word 50 and 800 if here 50 and 800 comes up what will happen is from this particular book the result would be similar there would be weights assigned to this particular uh, number in the example that you are saying is it's basically the weights that we have created and i will cover how the weights are created the weights that we have created for the different words so let's say if we have got a, a word vector for you know five uh, length and it will search as you can see it's 00010 means there is a one at the fourth index so we, it will search for the fourth index in that particular word embedding matrix first second third fourth and that will be the output for the hidden layer since this topic is rnns using text pro processing i am assuming i might to be wrong that uh, we have a mix of audience who have the knowledge of ans and cnns and the how, how the you know hidden layers or how the so if we go to the very first slide this one so this is the input layers hidden layers output layers i am assuming that how uh, this thing is taken care of uh, is clear to uh, the audience because rn comes a lot after ann cnn and rnn okay okay so uh, to to make it more since you know uh, as there was one question also that how do we compute word embeddings uh, yes nishesh we'll have five values okay so as as you can see you know there is a lot of confusion let's say if you have got two books only so your vocabulary would be limited to two books if you have got three books your vocabulary would be limited to three books you can create all this from just from three books you know so that would be a problem if you are trying to train your machine learning model so what you know google and stanford and facebook has done it has they have done is they have created a you know word embedding matrix or this weightage vectors for all the words from the internet so like as you can see stanford stanford what stanford as you can see the second number globe 
Stanford has taken a dump of all the Wikipedia's words and created a comparison matrix for this. And hello, my cough. Yeah, guys, can you please switch the turn off your mics? Thanks. Yeah. So, glove is a word embeddings that has been created by Stanford by taking into account all the Wikipedia terms, and they have created word vectors for all these particular uh, words from Wikipedia. I, I'll show you how it looks. Since the comparison is huge, uh, so this is the example. As you can see, the word the it has got and see you can see it has compared with lot of documents and based on that it has created the vector representation of it uh, there must be some other uh, things that these are these files are open to download and we are going to use them also so you can see the word during that's the visual representation based on uh, vector representation of uh, during based on the wikipedia's data so as you can see, we were doing it in 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, my negative also. So these are the representations. So that's how machines understand. If you type year, the machine will not take into account year. The machine will take this number. And based on that, this number, the machine will process. That's the Stanford guys have done it. Google has also done it. Facebook has also done it. These are libraries free to use. You can download them and use it directly into your machine learning models, NLP models, instead of worrying about how to go about creating vectors, whether the vectors that we are creating are right or not. And they give you perfect standard values across all businesses. So let's say I am into financial domain. Tomorrow I switch into some other domain and I want to use NLP. So these embeddings would remain same and they would give standard results. It, it would not be subjective that, okay, uh, maybe I had a limited data in past. So the word embeddings that I created worked only then it will not work now. Since the uh, coverage of words that they're creating is quite large. Yeah, okay, so we have a question that, for example, take word to vec So word to vec is an another approach. Uh, there are, are these word embeddings can be extended to, right, for any space? Yes, yes, Chandra, these can be extended based on your, uh, I have, uh, I have personally seen people and in industry as well using or creating their own, sub, you know, customized word embeddings based on the use case. Sometimes they help you to increase the accuracy and sometimes they really play with your accuracy. So if you have the data, good quality data and in huge amount, yes, you can extend these word embeddings. But if you, you if you can you know, but if you, you know you you trust the Google and Stanford and Facebook they have all the data so the word embeddings that they have created they usually contain all the words all the words there is no word that is left untouched. Okay, so let's uh, move to next. Okay, so now so we have covered uh, word embeddings so that was a basic prerequisite for learning to understand what is RNN because until then you will not understand how RNN works. So basically RNN, why RNN? So that's the main question. Why we have got artificial neural network, we have got CNN, conventional neural network, why RNN? So basically, you know, these days machine learning techniques, different machine learning techniques are used to different types of data. We also use, you know, machine learning algorithms for uh, sentiment analysis, for categorical uh, data. We have different models for supervised learning, clustering, regression, classification, all sorts of that. So there are different machine learning techniques are used. But, you know, uh, all this data is independent. Let's say if you want to predict a salary of an individual, his salary will not depend on the previous candidate that comes. It will not happen. Okay, the previous candidate was asking this much salary, so the next candidate will get this much salary. It's independent of 
all the you know entries if you want to predict the age of a person or if you want to predict uh, whether the person has diabetes or not it will not depend that the diabetes of the previous person okay the previous person who was tested for diabetes had diabetes so this person might have diabetes this this will not happen only that person's results or <coughs> records or measurements would be taken into account so that where that is where rnn comes into account so basically sequential data is different from other data in terms of sense that uh, for others it's order independent but for se sequential data set it is not that so let's take an example as as you can see over here uh, uh, you can see a blinking uh, machine you know input a word so over here it's like okay let it start okay so the input we input a word machine uh the machine predicts learning and that learning again becomes a input and the machine predicts is and that is again predicts goes in back into the input and the machine predicts you just the machine predicts fun so the output becomes machine learning is fun okay santosh has a doubt uh hi uh yeah can we use the normal text classification models like linear cvc yes yes we can use we can use for no, we can use normal text word to vectors for we can use you know nave base and directly do a uh, classif sentiment classification or any sort of classification why we are focusing on word embeddings over here is because if you take into account linear svc or nave base they take into account just one word vector they don't take into account all the word vectors so let's say i want to say i want to predict what so so if you you know you your phones have got uh, auto prediction so you type a word i am going out for a the your phone just your phone's text keyboard model will predict i am going out for a movie a walk to meet a friend so that's how does that happens it happens because it takes into account all the previous words and that is what is missing in word to vec because word to vec is a representation of just one word it is not a representation in comparison to all the other word words so it is contextual based on previous word and frequency of matches how it's generated which id should we use okay id you can okay we'll keep this for the q and a section otherwise we'll not be able to complete our session okay so okay so why recurrent neural networks because when the data is in sequential manner especially especially text data uh, we need information from the past to give you an example so so let's say we have example in front of our eyes machine learning okay okay it, it yeah okay machine learning is fun you know if had be we been doing Uh, a word to vec representation we would just be running our algorithm on learning and based on learning we'll say okay learning learning is good that sentiment would come but when we want to predict the next iteration like what would be the next iteration we take into account rnns because they have got memory from previous words like what was the previous words meant and what they wanted to do as you as you can see that's its name rnn recurrent neural network as you can see input a word that is our input just if you just take into account this in terms of the input layer so input layer is a word then we have got hidden layers which is rnn recurrent neural network and it has got a memory because it feeds the whatever result comes out of it it feedbacks to the layer again so that's why it has got his name recurrent because it's repeating the result to itself and then based on that particular output it gives the result that's why rnns are useful 
and that's why RNNs are used instead of AN, ANN or CNN or other machine learning algorithms because they have got a memory of past. We'll try to understand this more in depth in next slides. So if you can see, RNN, a type of neural network where output from the previous step are fed as input to the current step. Usually in neural networks, what happens is input and output are independent, but in cases where we want to predict the next sentence, we want we should know in memory what the previous sentence meant. I am hungry. I want to eat. Okay. If we are not, you know, giving much importance to the previous sentence, like I am hungry, I want to eat. So the next prediction would come any. But if we are giving, okay, there is one more question. Okay, cool, Vijay. Yeah. So if we are trying to predict the sequential data, let's say in terms of predictions for the next sentence, then RNs come into existence. We cannot use ANN and CNN over here because they are independent. The input and output in ANN and CNN are independent. They are not interrelated. But over here in terms of text processing or speech tagging or, you know, text predictions we need sequential data to because we need memory from the past like what that particular the text or strings were trying to say and based on that we predict the next sentence so rn has rnn has a memory which remembers all information about what has been calculated in past and based on that it gives you information for the or it gives you the prediction like what can be the next prediction so if we take into the formula or maybe the architecture, so that's how the architecture for RNN looks like. So one thing to take into account is when I say memory of past. So memory of past means time is involved over here. So we have got three main things to be taken care of. One is XT. So XT is basically the input time. So basically input is a function of time time over here and based on that we feed that input into our hidden layer and based on that hidden layer we get a hidden layers function of time and based on that this particular layer has got a recurrent memory which it feeds back to the recurrent unit so basically the hidden layers so basically when we say xt ht yt so xt is basically input ht is basically hidden layers function of time and yt is basically y is always our prediction with a function of time so all these are dependent on time so if we if we can see the function so xt xt is given yt that would be our prediction is basically based on so the formula for predictions in rnns uh, is basically weight of output hidden layer the weights of hidden layer and a bias so all of us we know that a simple line equation is equal to y is equal to mx plus c where c is some constant ir irreducible constant so that is what bias over here is so bias always remains it cannot be reduced or it cannot be removed and this is basically whatever we are saying weights and h to the t that is basically this I, this is not this it i'm just trying to give you a representation that how a simple lines uh, equation is also used in a rnn or a so so this particular equation remains same for ann cnn and rnn it doesn't change and for the hidden layer the weights are calculated based on the function of weight uh, of uh, the inputs and weights of the recurrent unit and again there is a bias for hidden layer so basically h t minus 1 so basically what happens is for the current prediction the previous prediction will always be taken into account that is t minus 1 so if you want to predict for let's say a person for 100th so prediction for 999th will always be taken into account so uh, these are the visual representations how they are mathematically represented it's t m k 
so which shape of x to the t is d shape of h so x is input h is hidden y is output and weights how the weights are calculated is d into m so basically d is your shape of x into m is your shape of hidden layer shape of hidden layers is m into m why m into m because you can see it goes back into this so if there are you know dimension of hidden layer is 15 it would be 15 into 15 we all we'll also cover into this and then there is m into k so k is basically your output classes let's say if we are, we are trying to predict a multi class uh, classification model our output would be uh, 3 or 5 based on the cl output classes and then the shape of weights of output would be m into k so m is our dimensions of the hidden layer so 5 into k we'll cover this with the exact number so this is the overall architecture for rnn and how the formulas so basically if you can see the softmax why softmax softmax is active activation function uh, which is used for multi class classification models we can use others as well sigmoid if it's a binary classification model okay okay there is one chat so how it's done in reinforcement learning yes yes you can say that that uh, it's a closed loop and it l but what happens is in reinforcement learning is that based on the output there is a feedback word backward propagation and based on that the weights change but over here before even output comes the memory of that particular neuron gives the output for the next neuron or the next prediction uh, i'll show you how so let's say uh, so, so 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 as we were discussing like why you know there is a need of rnn when we already have artificial neural network and cnn convolutional neural network so let's say there are you know uh, a ann model or artificial neural network model which has got one input so this is one input and it has got three hidden layers so this is one two three these are three hidden layers and they all will have weights so weights is basically weights one b1 so b1 is always a bias there will always be a irreducible bias that will always be there because we cannot estimate a uh, hundred percent of the weights and when we're trying to predict the predict a model for this or build a model for this using three hidden layers so we will have w1 b1 w2 b2 so the w2 b2 are the weights of second hidden layer and w3 b3 are the weights of third hidden layer and based on that we'll have output this means we have got three hidden layers now i'll tell you why you know rnn is so effective so let's say how we how do we calculate weights for the neural network as you can see t is equal to 20 sequence length so these are the assumptions that we are making t is equal to 20 sequence length let's say you have a got a sentence of 20 words let's say machine learning learning is fun i am uh, i really like predictive analytics i also like deep learning this kind of a sentence with a length of 20 so these are vectors and input dimensions <coughs> these are basically dimensions based on so these are the sequence length of that particular string that we created so uh, yeah so the length for if if you recall the length for this particular string i'm just you know trying to correlate it so the cat sat on the head dog ate at so these are eight instead of eight we have got 20 and when we converted these strings into word vectors as we created over here for cat it was one one but since the length is 20 the dimensions for this is 10 and then we created a hidden layer so new all neural networks have a hidden layer so as you can see these are three hidden layers and same way we created hidden layer size means we created 15 perspectrons multi-layer perspectron and k is 3 number of output classes okay there is a question i can't hear your voice uh, am i audible 
there is a uh, question that uh, my voice is okay cool okay thanks okay yeah so we have, yeah k is equal to 3 as we covered k is always the output if we have got a multi class classification or we have got a binary classification yes or no k will be 2 if we have got a multi class classification k would be more than 2 so is output classes how the weights for the on uh, this particular ann so this is ann artificial neural network that we are talking about will be calculated the formula for that is sequence length into input dimensions into again sequence length into hidden layer size so it comes 20 into 10 into 20 into 15 that's the architecture that has been defined by machine learning scientists and it comes to 6000 weights so let's say if you have got a one input that machine learning or deep learning architecture will check that input against 6000 weights for just one layer just one layer over here it will be 6000 weights so there will be numerical calculation for 6000 weights hidden to output so these are all are hidden hidden to output the formula is given by t into m is sequence length into hidden layer size into again sequence length into output class like binary class will be 2 and then the weight would be 18,000 weights and this is a very small figure that I'm giving you because usually let's say instead of sequence length 20 if you're trying to parse a PDF file that would have a sequence length of close to 500 to 600 words just imagine the kind of words it will be the weights that it will generate total 7000 78 yeah 78000 weights for this particular calculation now going forward okay there is a lot of questions <coughs> okay okay so now when we take into account the rnn why you know rnn over ann for sequential data so let's say what happens is rn converts the independent activations into dependent can activations why as you have covered over here so this is the independent input coming in and when there is output from hidden layer then this particular is this particular output is again fed into the so from independent it is giving a dependent variable and based on that it reduce, reduces the complexity of the increasing parameters and you know memorizing each previous outputs by giving each output as the next layer so whatever as we mentioned that for thousandth patient if we want to say okay what kind of a nature he has it will take into account what previously that person did like how how many friends that person had uh, so these kind of sequential information that person uh, you know had will be taken by rnn so let's calculate the weights for the rnn so the again we have got the same numbers 20 15 20 10 15 3 20 10 15 3 so hidden weights input to hidden so one thing is as you, the major difference is instead of having three hidden layers we can have one layer and with every output that one layer will feed back that output to that layer itself before giving output for the input so it's like it will be always be t minus one if i want to predict output for t is equal to 99 the output for t is equal to 99 minus 1 will be taken into account in that particular same layer only we don't need another hidden layer and based on that we calculate the input to hidden weights it's given by the formula input dimensions into hidden layer size that would be 10 into 15 150 weights then there is hidden to hidden just imagine over here we have got three hidden layers having 6000 weights but over here we have got one hidden layer that you know feedbacks to itself so we kind of multiply 
input hidden layer size into hidden layer size which gives us 15 into 15 so these are the standard formulas which are used to calculate weights and hidden to output weight output weight k is basically the output class over here also we had three so the, like it's a multi-class classification and 45 weights so we have got just 420 weights so just imagine a an using 78,000 weights for the calculation for one input and a rnn using 420 weights for calculation even if this particular 78,000 weights tend to be correct the chances probability of the correct prediction would be very low it would be 78,000 1 by 78,000 and over here it's 1 by 420 the chances are always high so that's why RNN perform well comparison to ANN or CNN I hope uh, that is uh, that made sense because this is the only reason because you know the other ANN or CNN architectures they over parameterize they complex they increase the you know memory memory space they you know increase the complexity and because of that the calculation of weight becomes impossible and we need a huge infrastructure a lot of GPUs CPUs for calculation and that becomes a cumbersome process okay so I guess we have a question okay uh, thanks Chandra okay okay so we'll just you know take an overview of what we have just covered you know so the mechanism by which two kinds of neural networks so ANN and CNN uh, as we have covered uh, is different so all do have input layer hidden layers output layers but in case of RNN we have got a feeding hidden layers which feed the results back to the hidden layers to make the accuracy more correct and it is mostly used in terms of sequential data when I say sequential speech by speech let's say if you want to predict what will be the next word coming out of my mouth you will definitely take into account all the words or lines or sentences I'm speaking before that particular prediction same goes for word predictions text predictions that's just the way I told you if you are using Google Gmail you're typing some email it gives you kind of you know in a sub sublime text what would be your next word that's a sequential data it knows when you say thanks and it knows it will the person will type regards because it is taking into account the previous word which has been taken other algorithms an and cn and other machine learning algorithms don't take in all this into account so that's why sequential data can only be it can be used by other algorithms but sequential data performs well and way better with rnns because they have a feedback loop so you know to just to sum it up cnn so the another you know disadvantage or advantage if you're doing a video text processing cnn would be the right choice if you're using sequential data rnn would be the choice so i'm giving you the advantages and disadvantages of both so basically CNN takes a fixed size input and generate fixed size output. So conventional neural network, the on input would always remain same. If you're processing it for a image or a video, the pixels will also always remain same. So dimensions of those pixels will remain same. It would always be three into three matrix or nine into nine matrix. It cannot be, you know, the model has been trained on some other dimensions and the output would come in some other dimensions. CNN is a type of feed forward. I, I, I hope you uh, recall what is a feed forward. Uh, okay. So all this minus this, this feedback loop is a feedback, feed forward, because only the weights travel forward. There is no feedback coming in. So that's a feed forward neural network. So CNN is a, CNN is a feed forward neural network network which uses multi multi-layer presbyteron the way we mentioned three layers so it's multi-layer presbyteron you know which are designed to use minimal amounts of pre-processing because what happens is the input size is fixed because of that it 
the pre-processing is less when the input size varies the pre-processing becomes large you know C cnns use connectivity between its neurons uh, so usually how you know the animal visual cortex it's like if someone touches me on the hand my reflex activates and tells me okay take your hand up or pull your hand back so that's how cnns work cnns are ideal for images and video processing because uh, you know they are made to take into account fixed input size and generate fixed size output if you will feed a cnn dog or cat picture it will give you example in terms of dog and cat only you cannot you know feed that half cat half dog and it it will give you output but but that output will always be wrong rnn rn can handle any input output lengths because text can never be same let's say one document will have 20 vocabulary length another document would have 50 vocabulary length another document would have 60 vocabulary length all these can be fed into rnn and the output is always correct unlike feed for forward neural networks this is something the major advantage is they have got an internal memory to process sequences of inputs so they use time series information as we covered that we have got three functions of time x t h t and y t h t is basically hidden layer and y t is our predictions so these are So that's why RNNs are ideal for text and speech analysis. So let's cover one of the other, you know, tasks that RN can do is basically application of RNN. Let's say we have got a real life case study. We have got insurance claims. So what happens is, uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief, you know, we all have car insurances and uh, someone hits our car, the agent comes in, takes into account, okay, the car has been hit and all, all that stuff and writes a memo. It's a memo in terms of, okay, what he, what he saw in the car, was there a dent, Was what kind of a damage it was. And based on that, he... Uh, just closes that memo and we want that memo to be processed by a rnn because it's a text data so what we'll do is so to give you an example just imagine uh, that's a problem statement just imagine that particular memo that that uh, agent has created has got 100 words so it's like x1 so no proof of damage so these are the only five words that i am uh, five first words that i am i have mentioned just like that we have got x 100 so he has written a lot of it okay the cars was car was without parking it is on the road and all that stuff we want to predict whether the insurance claim is a genuine one or it's a fraudulent claim someone has just you know punched the car with his hand and wants to mint money out of the insurance company now we have got if we convert this problem into RNN problem, we have got 100 words as inputs, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. For these 100 words, we have got hidden weights and again they are 100. And for these 100, we have got again 100 outputs. As you can see over here, this is something very important. The output from the h1 goes into output of h2 as we mentioned h t minus 1 memory of past h1 h2 memory of past means proof as you can see while we are feeding x2 proof h2 is also getting memory that before proof there was also a no it's not just proof and again damage if you can see h5 damage then this damage is getting memories of no proof of cord damage. So the output for Y5 will have information from all of it, not just just like word to vector. Damage negative fraudulent. No, that will not happen. It will have information from all the previous inputs. Now the thing is, okay whatever approach you take you know if you take into account first five words or 
all 100 words or whatever approach you take the insurance company is just focus that i want the output and i want the output to be correct how will that that happen so what it can be done is one way could be that as we mentioned here for the first five that the output for for y5 the damage output for damage would have information from all the h4s and that is what has been written here that one way could be reading that whole whole article of 100 words and then taking the output of 100 with the information from h1 h2 to h99 till h99 and based on that giving that information to hidden layer of 100 and based on that the output for y100 will be yes or no that yes it was a fraudulent claim or it might not be a fraudulent claim as, as only output of 100 has only seen the all the words there might be a case that top five words would say something else and rest of the 50 words say something else or maybe you know if we are trying to <coughs> take into account output for the 50th top 50 words till that time you know the story must be something else and after that story might change you never know so we can just you know take into account the 100th output and based on that we can give the output that yes this was a fraudulent claim or not uh, as you can see we don't even need to take into account into y1 into y100 so y1 is basically predictions we only need memories we don't need predictions because prediction will only matter for y100 this is one way of doing it and these ways are also used it's not that this way is not correct this way is also used because y100 would have information from h99 and based on that it will give the output that whether the final decision is correct or not another approach could be you know instead of taking the y100 as the output we take the max of okay there is a question how very intermediate is useful to understand however uh, so yeah so there are intermediate layers may be useful yes they are useful to understand but you know the thing is these hidden layers that you're talking about will again feedback to the hidden layers only so that won't make any sense and it will not solve the purpose that we are focusing on so that's why it's better to keep it uh, the feedback loop yes yes right okay so yeah so what i was saying is instead of taking the y100 so y100 is basically output of y100 means the output of the hundredth with the memory of h99 we can say with a surety that the document uh that, that the claim is fraudulent or not instead of that we can what we can do is we can take max of ht now what is max of ht uh this is a concept that comes from cnn convolutional neural network what happens in cnn is nn is there is a feature map of zero so let's say if you're taking an image of your face the cnn will take a feature map your face and where it, it will kind of you know run that feature map over your face and say okay then there is a nose coming it will give one lips two these type of numbers there is a plain face zero eyebrows two that sort of thing and based on that what max pooling does is it takes into account only the features that are relevant so it's like it will only take one two two zero it will remove zero zero and for the next image that comes for a cnn it will just search for this one two two zero and whenever that image is searched in the new image it gives you a result that okay it's a match so that's how max pooling that that's a brief about how max pooling works in a cnn so just like that we can have a max pooling uh, function over here also which will pick up the max feature from the feature map when i say max feature if you remember we have got word embeddings which tells which word means a lot if that particular so just imagine for there is a word over here which has got a word embedding coming out if you remember uh, this one 
so there is a word called car and based on that we have got a word embedding 1358 1358 what if this is the maximum of all the moment it reaches the maximum of all from the uh, all the outputs that would be the result and that would be the final result this is one approach so instead of going till output of 100 or output of 50 or output of 50th word or 100th word or 80th word we take into account all words maybe you know the first five lines tell okay so so the first five lines the agent has written the car uh, as as in the example no proof of car damage so obviously this is a, a fraudulent claim so if you know the vectors weights for this particular words are the highest then yes it comes into that okay these are this is a fraudulent and that's how we do a maximum pooling of h to to the, to, the, to the t yeah so that is all about rnn uh, in theory i hope uh, i was clear uh, with the rnn and why rnn and ann and cnn i also try to you know cover why the main reason rnn is used and how it's beneficial instead of ann and rnn so we'll uh, cover okay so we'll cover a, uh, a problem statement that i have uh, created okay so we will take into account a uh, uh, rnn <coughs> uh, classification model uh, basically the pop so this is a data set that i have used it's a data set which has been scrapped uh, uh, by internet it's a real data set so there might be some words that are might be kind of bad or vulgar because it's a real data set and based on that uh, the dimensions for this data set okay yeah okay and uh, this is basically a analysis like whether that tweet was toxic severe toxic obscene threat insult or identity you can see most of the values might be zero as well uh, because uh, there are empty tweets as well so not sure about a heading fight for freedom what will it contain let's see it has got uh, one so this is one obscene okay obscene okay so you can see you know this is a real data set so uh, we want to do a sentiment analysis like what the tweets are saying so these kind of problems are uh, used a lot in uh, financial companies for their marketing campaigns for their social media uh, managing or pr managing like whether the sentiment about a company is right or not as you can see uh, usually you know what happens is if there is something bad happened with that company uber ola just to take names uh, uber ola zomato so all of the tweets mentioning zomato did this zomato did not deliver my order so we want to identify like what's the sent overall sentiment for that particular company how the people are talking about that so this is okay okay <laughs> just a moment okay sorry guys i think i missed the screen sharing part yeah so this is the data set i was talking about it has got a id so these are basically tweets id this is a comment text so what the person has commented and what was the sentiment for that was it is a toxic severe toxic obscene threat insult identity hate so there are a lot of so let's say uh, identity hate so this is a it has been multi class classification model more than so binary is basically one and zero or two classes if they are more than two classes you call it a multi class classification so the tweets are like this awesome then i will regard your notice thanks so these are all real tweets nothing built up by me it's all real tweets and the organizations use this a lot even my current organization uses this kind of uh, uh, models to identify what's the market sentiment 
uh, when, when there is a demerger merger they want to understand like how things are happening so we have tried to build a sentiment uh, we want to build a rnn network which actually predicts based on let's say if you want to you know if we feed that neural network this particular tweet that neural network should be able to tell whether that particular feed uh, is obscene threat insult or entity hate or it's nothing if it's nothing it will be zero 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 uh, out of this we are just focusing on these five classes so yeah that's all about data set uh, okay why it's resume share Okay. Okay. So, oh, oh, why it's not visible? Okay. Just a moment. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. I can. Hey, sorry. Actually, I was facing some network issues. So, uh, I think uh, the session we still have twelve to fifteen minutes. So, you can make the most. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. 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 So, uh, some. Few minutes for in the end for Q and A. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. So I'll quickly try to cover this. So basically. Uh I, I hope the data explanation part was uh, okay that you understood why I was uh, what's the purpose of you know scrapping those tweets and want to uh, predict like what sentiment it is okay so this is basically so before making a machine learning model or a deep learning model there are four steps to it one is importing libraries another step is making the data into a readable form whether it's a text data a csv data or a sql database make make it into a, a reasonable readable form and after that there is a uh, some steps involved related to the pre-processing of the data, just as we talked about that we cannot feed directly the sentences to a machine learning algorithm. We need to convert them into words and all, uh, vectors and all. And after that, building the model and accuracy. So over here, as you can see, uh, these are the libraries that I have used Keras is a deep learning framework that is used for uh, deep learning. Uh, it's a popular one and the most easiest one if you want to start deep learning. Uh, you just jump onto Keras and you'll learn it very easily. Uh, embeddings, word embeddings we talked about. Dense, dense is basically the hidden layers. Input is the input layer. Uh, max pooling we talked about. Picking out the features that are more prominent. Uh, tokenizer. Tokenizer is basically what it does is let's say there is a string. My name is Udit Bhola. When I do tokenizer, each word would be represented as a list in a separate form. My is separate name separate, Udit separate, Bhola separate. So it will not be a string. And uh, pad sequences is basically what we do is uh, uh, we need to keep sh make sure that, you know, uh, so let's say one uh, sentence would be of 10 length another would be 20 so the lengths for the sentences would go as zero in the input so that's why we do pad sequences for the empty ones it will automatically add zero zero for the let's say if the maximum is 20 it will add 10 zeros to the 10 ones rsc aoc score aoc score is basically area under curve Adam is an optimizer which helps to learn weights. So basically, we have identified sequence length that we covered in T, D, M. So all this is T, D, M, and K. Uh, epochs is basically five, the number of times I want to go through over my data set to make sure that weights are the optimal. So what I am doing over here is I am loading the word vectors, uh, the file that I showed you, the file that we discussed initially. So I'm loading all these files that that will give me a numerical representation of all the words in the universe, kind of, I would say. Maximum vocabulary size, I have kept 2000 because it's a, you know, uh, it has been experimented and researched that a normal human knows max to max 20,000 words. Other than that, uh, it's very rare. And then what we are doing is we are uh, training, we are loading the data set using a pandas PD, pandas uh, read and CSV functions in the CSV. And based on that, we are tokenizing the words. Tokenizing basically, as I mentioned, separating them into a list. And after that, what we are doing is we are indexing those words, uh, tokenizing. So like my name is Udit Bhola, my zero name Udit, one Udit uh, two, that way. And then we are padding sequences, so making the sequence length for all the so as you can see, we have kept this maximum sequence length 100. So for all the 15957, one sentences, the length has become 100. For those who were short, zero has been added. 
in in their token tokens and what now over here what we are doing is we are uh, converting those words into the vectors basically we are trying to map map if there is a, a word called called year in that sentence we are mapping it with the numerical number over here that we discussed in uh, the initial slides yeah and then we are using the pre trained embeddings uh, model that we have done or created over uh, here and based on that we are creating a lstm network so lstm is a type of rnn it's an advanced version of rnn which is long short term memory uh, that's its definition and based on that we are uh, creating a neural network with hidden layers with activation function sigmoid uh, uh, and binary cross entropy as a loss function optimizer adam uh, uh, because it's uh, advanced version of stochastic gradient descent and matrix we are taking into accuracy uh, and based on that we are training the model we are validating the model with the validation split you know k cross cross validation kind of things uh, that's a very basic for machine learning uh, and we have created five epochs as you can see the loss for the first epoch was 0.704 for other 0551 0523 0510 and the last epoch it was 0502 and the accuracy it's increasing and validation loss it is also decreasing and validation accuracy is also increasing chat okay okay so now we are plotting uh, these uh, loss and validation loss with the epochs so as you can see with an increasing number of epochs loss is also decreasing validation loss is also decreasing and now we are plotting the accuracy based on auc area inter curve is basically how well it is separating the sentiments like how well it is able to distinguish or separate the output and as you can see uh, the accuracy so the auc is basically the, the more closer to one the more better the model so as you can see the graph is literally picking up and is going close to 97 so that's a real world embeddings real life world embeddings that we have used real life data set that we have used and a deep learning model this can be plugged and play into any problem statement for uh, machine learning and can be the and the you know usefulness of word embeddings and deep learning structure can be leveraged Yeah guys so that sums up my uh, lecture for today thanks for joining now it's uh, we are keeping it open for Q&A section uh, so feel free to shoot doubts i would be love happy to answer them thanks thanks sudeep uh, so guys uh, please uh, ask questions we still have 6 more minutes and i've also pinged you the feedback form uh, sorry i joined joined late today as uh, there were some network issues so yeah make the most out of it and uh, you can shoot out your questions to it thanks a uh, standard embeddings uh, no we uh, we did not use standard uh, we did not use standard embeddings uh, we used the stanford embeddings which are kind of standard they are created from the wikipedia's uh, uh, word vectors uh, was this use case a uh, good so if you are do want to do a you know sentiment analysis if you want to do a art genre article prediction if you want to do uh, thread prediction if you want to you know do any kind of predictions based on text this is the best use case for that let's say if if any company wants to deploy a deploy a model to understand how their uh, you know pr is going or how their marketing campaign is going whether they are doing good or not this is the best example this will give you a good idea for extracting text information from invoices that's a part of ocr optical character recognition or reading from uh, uh, that that uses open cv library uh, rnn will not be helpful over there because for extracting data we use we need cnns convolutional neural networks to identify similar features uh, from the data so if you might check up uh, with open cv2 library for that that would be helpful Uh, hyperparameters yes we have used hyperparameters over here as you can see the parameters that you can that you can see over here these are the hyperparameters we have used and then we have used adam optimization function to for the learning rate uh, and activation function as sigma these are the so this is all hyperparameters we haven't used any advanced hyperparameters over here these are the default parameters we can use it on also the the accuracy is also already 97% thank you guys any more questions uh, i think we still have 
uh, three four minutes. So any more questions? Yeah. Please ping it. And yeah. Then so. Yeah, yeah. So so we were not using those five specific words. We were trying to build a sequence out of those five specific words and based on the embeddings uh, that we have. If you can see the screens based on the embeddings, we were trying to plot those features and trying to understand whether these features are negative or positive. And based on that, we were trying to predict whether the overall summation of uh, the sequence of that particular sentence is negative or positive. Thanks, Adit. Uh, people are thanking you for this wonderful session. Yeah, thank, thanks for joining. Thanks okay. for being with me for Anshul, one and a half hour. Yeah, Anshul has asked one more question. Yeah. Now for text summarization and contextualization, what could be used? So text summarization is basically topic modeling. You were trying to identify what are the topics inside that particular text. So that is not part of RN. That's a altogether different concept where you try to identify but topic modeling. So maybe you want to look into topic modeling, what topic modeling is, and then you can work on the contextualization as well. Yes, yes, this can be used for language modeling too. This can be used for translation if you want to translate English into Spanish. So all the uh, language translation translation models work on RNN. So any translation model, English to French, Pan, uh, Japanese, Mandarin, all this work on this. Okay, guys, I think we are good to uh, end the session. It's 8 p.m. now. Thank you, Odith. Thanks for this wonderful session. Log on to Grey Atoms Learning Platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.